Now tonight's Cake News investigation on suspended driver's licenses. You might be surprised how easily it could happen to you. A simple parking ticket, a moving violation, a missed deadline, and the fines start piling up. Our Pilar Pedraza uncovers that more than 100,000 Kansans are stuck in a system driven by dollars. This investigation started when I got a speeding ticket. It happens. But then I missed a deadline I didn't even realize I was facing, and I got this from the city of Wichita, a letter warning me the city was about to suspend my driver's license if I didn't pay up immediately. Now, I was able to come up with the cash and pay the fines and fees, but it all got me wondering just how many other people had this happened to, how many hadn't been able to find the money in time or hadn't even gotten the warning, and how much does it cost everyone else? They sent me a letter in the mail saying that my license was suspended. Here we are 10 years later. Daniel Lawrence thought after paying his fine, he was good to drive again. Instead, he got a ticket for driving on a suspended license. A decade later, he still can't afford to pay that fine or the court fees, late fees, and reinstatement fees that have added up over the years. Me and my wife just filed bankruptcy, so how can I pay $2,000 if I can't even pay all my other bills, let alone get my driver's license back. I've seen people with more than $10,000 accumulated because, you know, 2,500 bucks a whack, it starts adding up pretty quick. Former traffic court judge Phil Journey has heard hundreds of stories like Daniel's. He says it often starts with a simple mistake, a missed deadline or a wrong address. Then trying to get things straightened out is difficult. Uh, it takes specific knowledge that many people simply don't have and don't know how to find out. As of June of this year, Daniel was one of more than 137,000 Kansans with suspended licenses, roughly half of them right here in Sedgwick County. That's about 5% of all Kansas drivers. So the next time you're out on the highway, take a look around you. Odds are that somebody in one of the vehicles has a suspended license. They have no way to get to work or pick up their kids or go to the doctor legally drive anywhere. While researching racial profiling concerns in Wichita, Dr. Walt Chapel stumbled on the number of suspended licenses in Sedgwick County years ago. He says state law is a big part of the problem. There's a whole tangled web of procedures the bureaucrats have figured out to keep people tied up in knots for years. Nationwide, states are starting to change that. More than 600,000 drivers in Virginia will be able to drive again. Virginia just outlawed suspending driver's licenses for unpaid fees and fines. Six months of fee amnesty to suspended drivers. While Ohio is in the middle of a statewide amnesty program. In California, there was about $60 million they collected by going through an amnesty program. Since 2010, Chapel has been trying to get similar legislation passed here in Kansas, setting up an amnesty program, allowing folks to work off their original fines through charity work or payment plans while getting rid of some of those late fees. But he says court clerks have blocked his efforts so far. Court clerks come in and say, that's our money. It's right there in the legislation. In the 2020 Wichita City budget, the municipal court gets $7.8 million from the city's general fund. The city expects fines and fees paid to the court, including traffic violations, to put more than $8.1 million back into the general fund. That's a net profit for Wichita, more for some small towns. You know, there's a recent article in Governing Magazine that talks about little bitty towns that basically run their town on fines and court costs. The reinstatement fees, they, there shouldn't be a reinstatement fee. If you already gave me my fine, my license is suspended, that should be gone. Why do I need to pay you even more? That's another fine on top of a fine. Which leaves Daniel still out in the slow lane with no hope of getting his license back this year. It's very irritating and upsetting. A chapel may get some help this year in his push to change state law when it comes to suspending driver's licenses. There's a legislative subcommittee on criminal justice reform that also wants to make it a priority. In Wichita, Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, investigates. So what can you do in the meantime? When you get a ticket, wait a day for the officer to file the paperwork, then call the court. That simple contact can make a big difference in the amount of time you have to pay your fines. For more details, go to Pilar's video with the Wichita Police Department on our Facebook page. Driving while suspended, driving while suspended. Local police and traffic court judges across the state say finding someone with a suspended license behind the wheel is a regular occurrence, partially because there are now more than 213,000 Kansans with suspended licenses. Just as often, it's because they couldn't afford the original ticket 
and didn't know they had options. Then trying to get things straightened out is difficult. Uh, it takes specific knowledge that many people simply don't have and don't know how to find out. While the various options are quite complicated, Mays Police Sergeant Brandon Stitt says there are two pieces of advice that can prevent a single traffic violation from spiraling out of control. That is key. Number one, make sure your address is current. Number two, communicate. First of all, call us, <laughs> contact us. Um, most of the people who, you know, have problems get 30 day letters, get a uh, suspended driver's license, they don't actually contact the court. Court clerk Sarah Javier says the sooner the better. Don't wait more than a day or two after the ticket to make the call. We're more, more willing to work with you if you call before your court date. Um, if you call five minutes before court starts, I really can't do a whole lot for you. She says good communication can help you set up a payment plan to get rid of that expensive ticket. It can even help if you have to miss a payment. Under a new state law this year, the judge might even waive the fees and late charges on the ticket in certain cases. If you can't make a payment, you can't make a payment. And the judge will typically understand that. Plus, just how long you have can vary. While the court date is typically about 30 days after you got the ticket, like here in Mays, and cities like Wichita, it's just 10 days. Most courts will send multiple warnings. You have approximately 60 days from the time that you're issued the citation before any sort of action against your driver's license is taken. There are more than 200,000 suspended driver's licenses in Kansas, but even if yours is not one of them, the problem still affects you. Hick News investigator Pilar Pedraza continues to dig into what some call an epidemic on Kansas roads and if there's a possible solution. Pilar. Well, Craig, it comes down to your pocketbook, both in terms of state taxes and car insurance payments. If I can't pay my bills, I can't pay my fine. Last week, we introduced you to Daniel Lawrence. He's one of more than 213,000 suspended license holders in Kansas. About half of them right here in Wichita and Central County. And he says violent, not having a license has been a severe handicap from home life. So I can't go do simple things like run into the grocery store. I can't go and take my kids anywhere. To work. I can't take the company vehicle and leave and go do things. All of which costs you too. If you have a suspended license and you can't get insurance and you're in a wreck and you hit someone, that hurts all of us. It's the state representative Gail Finney long. estimates 50% of drivers with suspended licenses, maybe more, drive anyway. As you have mentioned before, when you're driving down the street, chances are you're going to pass by someone that has a suspended driver's license. The more uninsured accidents in a state, the more the cost of no-fault insurance goes up for everyone, while those who don't work find themselves relying on state social services to feed their families. Just an increasing cycle that seems to never end. And believe it or not, the exploding prison population is a factor in this problem, too. Finney is chair of the Commission on Criminal Justice's subcommittee on reentry. She says many former prisoners can't find jobs because they don't have a license and can't get one. So they end up back behind bars. Which now, Finney says her subcommittee is looking at several proposals to send to lawmakers in January, including making restricted licenses easier to get and cutting out that 90 day waiting period that comes after you've you've paid your fines and fees before you can apply to get your license reinstated. Pilar Pedraza, Cake News investigates. For the last two weeks, we've been telling you about the alarming number of drivers who have suspended licenses in Kansas from how the problem got so big to the way it affects everyone in the state. Tonight, investigator Pilar Pedraza uncovers a new program in the city of Wichita designed to help you successfully pay off a traffic ticket no matter how much you owe. So we either pay a fine or pay our bill to keep our light on and keep our house. I mean, what are we gonna do? It's a story we've run across time and again in the last couple of months. Kansans building up late fees and unpaid ticket fines because they simply couldn't afford to pay the original ticket, ending up with a suspended license. So I've got a $2,000 fine. Folks like Daniel Lawrence, one of 213,000 people who now cannot drive himself anywhere. So there's, there's got to be alternative ways for us to be able to pay off a fine. 
While most cities offer a payment plan, for many, they come with interest rates. And those navigating the system told us if they miss a payment, they lose their license. So the judge will ask him, what are you able to pay in a given month? The city of Wichita is trying out a new judicial payment plan available only to those who come to court and speak directly with the judge. Based on that conversation, the judge will set a monthly amount you have to pay, say $50. If they make that $50 payment by the third Friday of each month, then they don't have to come to court. If for some reason you can't pay, a lost job or a payday that comes after the due date, for example, you just go back to court to explain what's happening. We want as much flexibility for that individual as possible to succeed. Maybe the judge lowers your payment or delays it, offers community service, or the chance to take a workforce training course in lieu of payment. Because that's allowing people to get training to be successful and to be able to uh, succeed in the court and elsewhere. Now, this new program in Wichita starts with tickets written as of October 1st and an original court date of November 15th or later. Court Administrator Nathan Emery started a similar program when he worked in Mobile, Alabama. There, it cut the number of people unable to pay their bills from hundreds to dozens on any given day. Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, investigates.